The Canadian healthcare system is now a shadow of what it once was. Back before the advent of the pandemic, it was celebrated as one of the best healthcare systems in the world, but now it is struggling to maintain a reasonable standard. The cause of this is certain. The woes of the healthcare system in the country began with the mismanagement of hospital affairs by the Trudeau government. Back when the pandemic was still fresh, and even at the point when it dwindled, the federal government enacted measures they claimed would help stall the spread. These measures resulted in a massive reduction in the hospital's workforce. While this tragedy occurred in hospitals nationwide, the federal government made no conscious effort to remedy the situation. Ontario's patient ombudsman says he has seen a rising number of complaints about the poor quality of care in the healthcare system and an increase in the use of force by hospital security. The findings were mentioned in the patient ombudsman's annual report, which was released yesterday. There were more than 3,300 complaints in the 2021-22 year, with most concentrated in the Toronto area and northern Ontario. Craig Thompson, who is the ombudsman, said that most complaints centered on lack of access to care and inadequate staffing. You see, these issues arose during the pandemic and were never addressed. Instead of this liberal government exploring options on how it can work with provincial governments to fix the problems they caused, Trudeau is ever so focused on pushing his carbon agenda. This prime minister is incompetent, and we see why almost daily. There has been a 43% increase in complaints from patients and caregivers who said they were treated with a lack of sensitivity and caring, especially in emergency departments. The ombudsman also said they received 22 complaints about alleged assaults by security guards. In an interview with the Canadian press, Thompson said, The system is certainly operating under quite a bit of strain, and we're seeing that because the complaints are related to staffing issues and access to care. The ombudsman's report found staffing shortages, COVID restrictions and service delays, combined with the fatigue and trauma arising from the pandemic, contributed to increased tension and occasionally violence in healthcare settings. This isn't surprising because, at a time when hospital staff numbers thinned, hospital managements were forced to saddle the ones who stayed behind with the tasks of those who left. This meant that there was more work per hospital staff without assurance of a corresponding increase in pay because the economy was a wreck then, and it affected workplaces like hospitals. With how stressful medical practice is, it shouldn't take a lot for healthcare professionals to lose it and become violent at the slightest provocation. And meanwhile, the Liberal government indirectly responsible for this was busy meeting with WEF members in Davos, among other things that would be of no benefit to the people. The report said there were 98 complaints about negative experiences with hospital security. It was added that several complainants reported being restrained in an unsafe manner that is inconsistent with the standard training for security guards. For example, a security guard's knee on their neck or back could cause severe injury or death. Most of those incidents with security guards occurred in emergency departments, in mental health wards, and at screening. The ombudsman said many problems occur in emergency departments. Thompson said, Hospital emergency departments have become the crucible where many of these pressures on the healthcare system ignite. The ombudsman said he was concerned about how hospitals responded to complaints as patient relations representatives often deferred to security. The report raised issues with the lack of a standardized process to investigate incidents involving security and the hospital's reluctance to share information with patients about who was involved in the incident. The ombudsman also found that complaints about the conduct of security guards were not routinely shared with the Ministry of the Solicitor General, which oversees security guards. The ombudsman said some hospitals undertook comprehensive reviews of security guard incidents. Several hospitals said they were actively considering a requirement for security guards to wear body cameras. Meanwhile, a new report different from that of the ombudsman shows that more than 14,000 people died on the medical waiting list for surgeries and diagnostic scans between April 1, 2021 and March 31, 2022. This report, which was published on March 2 by the think tank secondstreet.org, cited updated government data from several provinces, 
and calculated that a total of 14,057 Canadians had died while on wait lists during the 2021-2022 time frame. The data indicated that the cases include a wide array of required medical services, everything from hip operations and heart surgery to CT and MRI scans. Before dying on a waiting list, patients had waited anywhere from less than a month to over eight years. According to the report, many died after waiting longer than the recommended wait time. If you don't know how much damage this healthcare crisis has brought, I believe that with these statistics, your view should most likely change. When hospitals were understaffed, some began hiring contract nurses for exorbitant fees. In the long run, some of these hospitals couldn't afford the money to keep the contract nurses working. Sadly, a repercussion of this is the report presented by Second Street. In a news release on March 2nd, the president of Second Street, Colin Craig, said, The pandemic made a bad situation worse, but Canadians should know this was a growing problem well before COVID arrived. Each year, SecondStreet.org files freedom of information requests nationwide with health regions and provincial health bodies and obtains data on the number of patients who are removed from waiting lists for surgery, diagnostic scans, and appointments with specialists due to death. The organization also tracks how many patients are on wait lists overall. The think tank said some provinces extensively track and collect wait time statistics, while others collect very little or none. Craig said, With the exception of the province of Nova Scotia, provincial governments and their respective health bodies do not break down the number of patient deaths potentially linked to the state taking too long to provide needed services. He added, Oddly, governments across Canada routinely require businesses to detail even the most minor workplace injuries, such as accidents where employees are bruised as a result. If this is something businesses must track, why can't the government tell us how many patients are dying due to long waiting lists? In December 20th to 22nd, the organization said data showed waiting list deaths were at a four-year high since it began tracking the information between 2018 and 2019, and that surgical waiting list deaths were up more than 24% over the past four years. A lot has been said about the healthcare crisis in the country, and while the federal government has met with provincial governments concerning healthcare funding, so long as the crisis still persists, accusing fingers will still point at Trudeau for being responsible for this mess. Do you think this healthcare crisis will be resolved anytime soon? Can you relate to any of the complaints laid out by other Canadians? Please drop your comments below. We would love to hear from you. We have a Telegram group where we can discuss issues of national concern without fear of censorship. The link to the group is in the description. We would love to have you. Please leave us a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new or haven't yet, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you at the next one.